Well, happy Monday morning, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Running Shorts, where I give you a lot of information in just a little bit amount of time. And today we are at a place, it's in Stamford, not far from where I live, and it is Scalzi Park. Scalzi Park has tennis courts, it's your normal park, tennis courts, it's got uh, a nice place to run near the river, and it also has a skate park, which is what I'm gonna be doing after the run. And today's topic of discussion is how cheap can you really travel for? And when you say you can't travel, is that the truth or is there a little bit something else? Let's get right on into it. How can you keep your costs down when traveling? What's ways to stay cheap but not really get into the experience of traveling itself? Now the first thing you need to ask yourself is are you traveling because you want it to be luxurious or you want it to be adventurous and you can definitely sacrifice the price of things? Now if you're looking to be adventurous and try new things without spending hundreds, then this is the video for you. The four categories I would say are gonna cut into your pocket the most that I think you could save the most at would be these four. You have your accommodations, food, transportation, and activities slash festivities. Now, the one I'm gonna tell you right now you're gonna save the absolute most money in would be food. Food's the number one thing. I'll tell you, you could wake up in the morning, you can have a coffee. You can then go to a brand new restaurant, try everything, see a dessert, get that, have your lunch, eat out, dinner, have two or three drinks. We're talking well over $100 right there. Some of the traveling that I did and foods that I found were definitely the cheapest could be simply and we're not even sacrificing <clears throat> nutrition when we do this. You can have, get some fresh produce, you could have your broccoli, you could have some you have carrots, all that stuff, your rice, you have some eggs, and you get some meat. Now you're not living luxuriously like we talked about, but you're eating for probably less than $10 a day if you do that. That's gonna save you a lot of money. So right there, if you're traveling for a week and then you're doing everything from eating out in the morning to getting your coffees out versus making it yourself, you're gonna save yourself well over I'd say $50 a day doing that. But if you're eating out, the sky's the limit. Food, that's your number one thing. Now keep in mind, if you're trying to live luxuriously and you wanna go on a cruise, this video is not for you, but <clears throat> if you wanna see something, go someplace and really explore all the nooks and crannies. Food, you just need enough to get yourself by. A couple fruits, a couple vegetables, your meats, and you're good. Next thing would be accommodations. Now this, I cannot stress enough as an American, having the movie called Hostel come out gave such a bad rep for hostels. I myself never even saw the movie and I was skeptical. Number one tool for saving money with accommodations, hostels, do them. <laughs> In my travels, I saw hostels as cheap as $20. No, honestly, I saw them as cheap as $15 and that one I'm talking about was in Athens and had all you could drink, wine, Monday through Friday. Every hostel's different, every hostel's different, some have perks. The best part is, is that with hostels, most of them will have some type of program where when you go there, they'll have a uh, bulletin board where they'll tell you the things to do, uh, they'll give you discounts on those things, and the more people you bring, the more you're gonna save. That goes for pretty much everything in the video. So I would say accommodations, hostels. Check for your hostels. A tip that I would give you is that they're on average way cheaper than, I mean, they are cheaper than hotel. But don't try and go for the one that's $20 if you see a better rated one for $22, $23. We're trying to keep it cheap, but we're not trying to make this a living hell for us. I've had some that were terrible, but I didn't read the ratings. Read the ratings, put in that extra dollar or two, and it's going to pay itself off. Also, when doing hostels, the good thing is, is that everyone is traveling, and they all have stories of places they went, places they're going. And if you're trying to meet new people, then there's no better place than that. Now, as far as the traveling itself, we're talking road trips for this video, or maybe you're already someplace. I'm not gonna talk about the traveling of airplanes, but you're already there. How do you make it cheaper? Easy. More people you travel with, cheaper it's gonna be. This goes for gas, but everything. More people you have, cheaper it's gonna be. With gas, if you're trying to drive five hours by yourself, who knows, let's call five hours of driving, gas 50 bucks it's a lot of money for you and if you drove five miles or five hours away you're gonna have to drive five hours back every extra person you put in there divides that cost it sounds simple it is simple you already knew this 
But when you're traveling for a few days, it goes a long, long way. And there's apps, I think one is called Gas Buy, where you just type in where you are and it tells you the cheapest gas. If you're traveling for a few days, every penny count. Lastly, the category of which I think you could spend a lot of money in, but also save yourself a lot of money is activities. So if you're traveling for the adventure of it, I cannot stress enough to try and get the app called Meetup. And there's also plenty others. You can check Facebook. And what they are is you can just meet up with the locals and do things. On these sites, they'll have things like the festivals going on, which are typically free. You can have your farmer's markets. These are all things that don't cost a penny. And if you're going outside of where you live, culture may be different. And it's a perfect experience where it's free and you can really soak it all up. Another one, Groupon. Yes, everyone knows Groupon. Have you used it? In New Zealand, I saved myself probably 100 plus dollars in a trip from simply using Groupon. And there are some really good deals, but do keep in mind a lot of them are time sensitive in the sense that if you buy it, it tells you the days you can use it. So keep that in mind if you're on a tight time schedule. So those are the four things. We have our food, accommodation, transportation, and activities. If you do everything in the favor of saving money, I promise you traveling is not gonna be as expensive as you think. It might not be pennies on the dollar, but simply put, you wanna do skydiving or something, you can do that. Group on that, save yourself some money. If you wanna go eat, listen, you can group on food as well. So take these into account next time you're going for a travel, going for a road trip. And the more the merrier and also the more people, less expensive it's going to be. Those are my tips. Let me know any of yours because traveling didn't stop when I got back home from New Zealand. Plan doing way more. And there's something to be learned from everybody. Thanks a lot for going on a run. First episode of Running Shorts. See you guys later. They're not so new looking anymore, but this is the uh, first run I went on with these puppies. So it's the first of many. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for checking out the first episode of Running Shorts. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can check out the playlist of Running Shorts right here. And my last video is right over on this side. You can join me. We're going to go for a little skate.